Hey guys, welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to throw a rock at an enemy or any object you want so you can throw anything at an enemy AI and it will stun that enemy so they will fall on the floor, be stunned so they won't be able to move and then after a set amount of time they'll carry on moving again so if you're in an enemy chase you can throw this at them, they'll stop chasing you and then carry on if they can still see you afterwards so I'll show you what this is going to look like so we get in and you can see the enemy is moving around there if I hit G I'm going to throw a rock so it just missed them, so this might take a minute to actually hit them but you can see that when I do so again it can be any button if I hit them, they fall to the floor like that, the rocks disappeared after 5 seconds they can get back up like so and continue about their day, what they were doing, which is for me just randomly roaming around and you can set this up so the player has a limited amount of rocks so obviously they can pick some more up if they want but I've just set this to be 5 by default so that's going to happen and then when we run out of rocks we're not going to be able to throw any more so I'm pressing G, I'm not doing anything. So again, obviously you can then pick up more rocks if you want. So actually I might throw that in there as well just to show you how to do that at the very end. But I'll show you how we're going to do this now. So our first step is we're going to want to import our animations and create these into montages. So I've already got these here, so you can just drag and drop them in. I've obviously got these from Mixmo. I've retargeted them to my mannequin here. So I'll leave links to these in the description down below. So once you've imported those, we're just going to select both of them like this, right click, create, create and in montage like so as we're going to be using animation montages to do these. Once you've got that, what we want to do is we want to open up the stunned anim montage like so. So open up the stunned there and we're going to search for auto. And we're going to disable enable auto blend out, so just untick that like so and hit save. And the reason we're doing that is because obviously you can see here, at the very end of the animation, he falls over like that. If we leave this ticked, what's going to happen is it's going to reach the end and then it will just restart. So, well it won't restart, sorry, we'll just get back up so he's standing like this which obviously we don't want, we want it to stay laid down there like that for however long we want. So if we untick that, that will happen, it won't automatically leave it. So if we save and close that, that's all good. Now the next step is we want to create our rock blueprint. So this is the object we're going to be throwing at the enemy. So for me, I'm going to go to content, I'm going to right click, I'm going to get a blueprint class, I'm going to get an actor, I'm just going to call this rock BP, like so. You can name this whatever you like, and just open that up straight away, like so. In here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a static mesh like so i'm just going to call this rock sm static mesh and i'm just going to be using the start content rock that we get here so sm rock like that this is quite big so i'm going to untick the snapping there and just scale this down like so to get to the size i want i think that would be good if i just put this in you can see maybe a little bit bigger like that i think that would be good and i'll just resize that again like so and then also disable snapping or moving it, I'll just move it so it's in the middle like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another component, get a sphere collision, so sphere collision like that, leave it the name as that, and then you can just scale this down to the size that you want, so I reckon that'll be good. And I'll move the rock to be in the middle like that. Once you've done that, I'm going to hit compile and save that. I'll re-enable these, and then we're going to drag the rock static mesh onto the sphere, so that now the rock is parented to the sphere, so wherever the sphere goes, the rock goes as well. And we're doing that because our next step is we want to select the sphere and we want to set simulate physics to be true. This means that it will fall, it will fly, we can throw it, anything like that is going to work perfectly if we just simulate physics like so. And obviously you can change its mass, so how heavy it is, it's linear damping and it's angular damping, which is obviously how much it gets slowed down on the linear side. So if you up this to, let's say 10, when you throw it, it will have more linear damping when you throw it like so. And the same with Angular, I'll put that to 0.5. Compile and save that. You can mess up those values, those are just two that I just randomly picked out of my head. So you can either leave those as default, which is what I had at the start of the video, or you can just set those to be whatever you like and mess about with it too. But compile and save that. And that's pretty much all we need to do in this rock blueprint here. So we can just close that like so. Then we want to open up our enemy AI. So I've already made one here, but if you don't have one, you can just duplicate the character blueprint open it up and then just delete what you don't need. So in here all I have is the random roam code that I have here. I do have a video on that if you want to see it. So that'll be linked on top of the screen and probably in the description down below as well. So once you've got this set up to how you want, we're going to scroll down here, find some space, right click and get event hit. And what this is going to do is it's going to fire this off whenever this hits or collides into another blocking volume. So another actor which has the collision as block, it will set off as event hit here. Other actor or just other there it's going to be cast to our rock BP or literally just anything that you want to throw at them. 
So if you want to throw a book, a rock, anything like that, you can just throw anything, just make sure you cast it after this other here, and you can have multiple things here as well, and it will still count. These are what we want to throw at the enemy to stun them. As rock BP, all I want to do is destroy actor. Now this is just so that when it hits the player, or the enemy, sorry, it's going to get rid of the rock. If you don't want to do that, don't do this step here. But that's just what I'm going to do so that it's much more efficient for the system. So once it's been used, it's hit the enemy, we don't need it anymore, we can just destroy it. So that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to compile that and open up the rock blueprint again, just to add something extra on here, because I mentioned that this is destroying it to help with performance. We also want to do that if the rock misses. So at the moment, if the rock misses, it's just going to stay there forever. If we throw a lot of rocks, that's not going to be very efficient at all. So we can come off of event begin play and get a delay to destroy it. Or actually what I might do is instead let you pick it back up again. So actually, for the moment, you know what, we'll leave it like this and then we'll come back to that later to pick it up. So we'll go back to our AI stun, forget I said anything there, and we're going to come back to that later. Out of this, destroy actor, what we're going to do is going to disable input. So actually no, I won't, I'll get the character movement and we're going to disable movement. Plug that in there like so. Out of this, what I'm going to do, play in anime montage. And the reason I'm doing that there, this is what's actually stunning the player, st the enemy, sorry. So this is going to actually prevent them from moving. Obviously, disable movement, that's the stun part. After this, what we're going to do is we're going to play and in montage. This montage here is going to be our falling over and knockdown animation montage. So let me just remember what I named that. Stunned, that was it, yep. So, and in montage here will be stunned and in montage like so. Out of this, what we're going to do is we're going to hold on D, left click to get a delay. And this delay is how long you want them to be stunned for. So I'm going to set this to 5 seconds, but you can set this to absolutely whatever you like. This is just the duration that they will be stunned for. And then after this, what I'm going to do is play and in montage again. This one is going to be the getting up. So getting up montage like that. Hold on D, left click to get another delay. Put the return value in there like so. So basically once this animation has finished playing, out of this, we're going to get the character movement again. And then just set movement mode like that. Plug that in there. I'm going to set it back to walking. So this is just enabling the enemy to be able to move again. And that is that code done. So we can compile and save that. So what it's going to do is when the rock hits the enemy, it's going to destroy the rock, stop the enemy from moving, play the stunned or get knocked over animation. Five seconds later, or however long you set it to, it's going to play the getting up animation. So it will get up. Once that's finished, it's going to re-enable the movement so they can then walk and move about again. And that is the base code of it done setting up this stun. So now what I want to do is actually set up so the player can throw this rock. So to do that, I'm just going to minimize all this and go to my character blueprint. So for me, that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. But for you, this could be third, first, whatever you've named it. And then in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll down and find some space. And then this is where we're going to get the action mapping to actually throw it. So let's make that. So if we go to edit, project settings, once this loads, we'll scroll down to input down here and we'll create an action mapping here. So I'm going to hit the plus action mappings and call this one throw object or throw rock or just throw anything like that. I'm going to change it from non to be G. Again, change this to whatever you like, but I think G is good. Quite common for it to be G to throw. Not sure why, probably G for grenade or something like that. I'm not sure. But you can set this to whatever you like. The benefit of action mappings is you can set up multiple keys. You set up keys for different consoles and you can also set up key bindings. But we're not going to go into that today. We're just going to set up the action mapping and set it to a key we want. Once you've done that, you can close that, right click back in the event graph here, and then we're gonna call that action mapping. So I named mine throw object. So you see input action, throw object there. At the press of this, we want to see how many rocks we have. So I'm gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch, plug that to the press there, and then I'm gonna hit plus variable here to get a new variable, I'm gonna call this rock amount, or rock ammo, or rocks, anything like that, and change it from a boolean to be an integer. Integer being a numerical value. Once you've got that, you're going to drag and drop it in here to get rock amount. Come out of this and get an exclamation point equals, which is a not equal to. So if this rock amount is not equal to zero, so we're going to leave that at zero, plug that in there. So if it's not equal to zero, we're going to throw something. If it is equal to zero, we don't have any, so we're not going to throw it. So obviously, if it's not equal to zero, then we have some, so we're going to come out of the true. So out of true, what we're going to do is we're going to get a decrement or decrement int so decrement integer like that with the get rock amount again into the first there and then we're going to set the rock amount after that like so and what a decrement integer does is it essentially just takes one away from an integer to then set a new one so it's going to get the rock amount minus one integer and set it to be the new rock amount now you can just do this in a normal integer minus an integer 
but this way it's just a little bit more clean as we're only going to need to take one away. Then after this, so once we've taken a rock away from the player, we want to actually spawn this in. So we're going to come out of this set rock mount and we're going to spawn actor from class. So spawn actor from class like that with the class being our rock BP. So rock BP like that. The spawn transform, what we're going to do is right click that, split the structure pin. And then for the location, we want to create a little reference in our character blueprint. So if we go to the viewport here, add component, add a sphere like so. And I'll just call this object ref, like so. And then over on the right here, we're going to scroll down. We're going to make sure that generate overlap events is unticked. Can character step up on? No. Collision presets? No collision. This will mean that there is absolutely no collision on the sphere at all, so the player won't collide with it. Other objects around the player won't collide with it. It won't trigger off box collisions to open doors, anything like that. And scroll down again. Hidden in game? True. That means we won't see it in game. So as far as the player is aware, this circle, or this sphere, sorry, here, does not exist. It's just simply for other developers to use as a reference. Now if we make that a little bit smaller, like so. In fact, I'll do that to make it even smaller, like that. And now we can just move this to wherever we want. So don't worry about these box collisions on the arms here, that's from a previous tutorial. But basically, this sphere here is where we're going to spawn in the rock. So you can put this absolutely wherever you want. I think there is going to be good for me. I might move it forward just a little bit, but put it wherever you like. Once you've done that and you've got it to where you want, let's go to back into the event graph like so. Then what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop a reference to that sphere here, so mine's object reference. Drag out of that and we're going to get world location. The return value of that will just be the spawn transform location for our rock like so. So it's simply going to see where that object reference is and then spawn the rock there. That again is why it's important that we have no collision on the sphere because otherwise the rock would probably just explode out of it as it's colliding with that. It needs to go somewhere so it's going to get a massive boost and just fly off. But it won't do that as the collision is better. So what we're also going to do is we're going to drag and drop a reference to our capsule component. So capsule component there, drag out of this and we're going to get world rotation. Return value of that is going to be spawn transform rotation. So what this is going to do is it's going to spawn it where that object reference is and also it's going to spawn it in front of the player. So this rotation makes sure it is always in front of the player like so. The scale you can put as whatever you want but I'm going to leave it as one. Now also with this reference here it should realistically do that, put it in front of the player sorry, as it's the location but sometimes it won't do it perfectly. Putting the rotation on there make sure it does do that however we want. And it also makes sure that it is going to be upright perfectly. So whichever way the player is rotated, so if the player is going down a hill, that will also be rotated going down a hill. If the player is going up, it will be up. If the player is straight, that will be straight. So it just makes it look a lot more realistic as if someone actually did just throw a rock. So we're going to come out after the spawn actor here, get a return value of this, and we're going to get sphere. So get sphere like so. So it will be all the way down at the bottom there. And that's our sphere collision. So you, if you named it something else, just get the sphere collision. Out of that, we're going to set physics linear velocity. Plug that into the spawn actor there. So what this is going to do is it's going to spawn the rock and it's going to add velocity to it in a linear direction, or so obviously in a straight line. And that is how we're going to throw it. So this is spawning it, this is throwing it. New velocity, what we're going to do is we're going to get the direction that the player is facing and throw it there. So we're going to come at the return value of this spawn actor again and we're going to get actor location, get actor location there, move that down a bit, right click just above it, and get actor location again, this time we've just reference of self, so it's the player. So we're getting the player's location and the rock's location. Out of the return value of the player's get actor location, so the top one, we're going to get unit direction vector, the player is in from, the rock is in to. So what this is going to do is it's going to get the direction from the player's location to the rock. So imagine if you're drawing a line from the player to the rock, it will get the direction that line is going in. The return value of that, what we're going to do is we're going to get a vector multiplied by a float, and I'm going to set this to be about 1000. You can set that to whatever you like, that's just basically how far or how fast the rock is going to fly out at. So how fast it goes also obviously determines how far it goes. So we just use that as a reference there. 1000 is what I used at the start of the video. The return value of this we're going to the new velocity of the set physics linear velocity, like so. And that is all we need to do to be able to throw it. So what it's going to do is when we press our button, if we have enough rocks, it's going to take one rock away from us, spawn the rock in front of us, and it's going to add a bit of velocity to it in the direction in front of us, so we are throwing it. So if we compile and save that, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to select it all, 
and then press C to comment it. And I'll just call this throw rock like so. Hit compile and save like that. So now we're essentially done. So if we minimize this, we can hit play to test it. I'll just delete that one and also get the AI in here as well. So AI stun there. And if I hit play, you see that actually we won't be able to throw anything if I hit G. We can't because I've just remembered I didn't actually set the variable. Let me delete another one of those. Go back to the character blueprint, select the rock amount integer there. We left that at zero. So obviously, if because it is equal to zero, it's not doing anything. So if I set this to let's say seven, that means I have seven rocks. So we compile and save that. Hit play to test this again. If we hit G, we're going to throw a rock. But you can see that's doing something quite weird. So it's going out and then it's just going straight down and through the floor. So let's have a look at why it's doing that. So you can see here it's something to do with the collision. So you see invalid simulate options. The sphere is simulating the physics, but it doesn't have the correct collision. So I just forgot to change the collision settings in there. So if we open up our rock blueprint again, go to the viewport here, select our sphere, and then if we scroll down until we get collision, I forgot we need to change it from overlap all dynamic to be block all. So if we go block all, compile and save, this should now work a lot better. So if we hit play, hit G, so you see now it's throwing it and it's not falling through the floor anymore. They're just going straight down like that. However, the velocity is still a little bit messed up. So if we go back into our character blueprint as well, so like so, third person character here. Ah, no, I know why it's doing that because I changed the linear drag. So if we go back to our rock blueprint and select the static mesh or the sphere, sorry, I changed the linear damping and angular damping. I'm not going to mess about with those. So I'm just going to reset this to default and that will actually be why it's doing that. So we compile and save, this should now look a lot better. That's just because I was messing about with it earlier, but I shouldn't have done that as I didn't do that when I was testing it. So we hit play, G, you can see we can now throw it a lot better and a lot further. So that's great. What I'm going to do, just mess about with it a bit more. So you see this is all the testing part. We're just getting it to see how we want it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move that out and a bit more up. And I might also increase the velocity here. So I'll put that up to 1200, like so, or 1300 that is. If you compile save, this should look a bit different. Hit G, you see that's going a bit higher now. So you see this is all customizable for you. You just change these values to get it perfect for you. So I might set that back to 1000 as I moved it up as well. So again, just mess about with this to get it for how you want. And there you go, you can see we can now throw rocks. So now if we get one to hit this AI, so this might be a bit difficult, you can see what happened is it disappeared and they're not moving and now they are. Now why didn't they not play the animation? We forgot to set it up as well. Missing loads of steps here. So one other thing we need to do is we need to make it so they can actually play animation montages. So for me, that's the mannequin, animations, third person and MVP, but just open up your enemy AI's animation blueprint. In here, we're going to go to the anim graph like so. Out of the slot machine, the state machine, sorry, what we're going to do is we're going to get a slot, default slot, and plug that into the result there. What this does is it just allows the use of animation montages. So now if we compile, save, this should now be done. Hit G, we can still throw rocks. If we go over to our enemy AI, throw a rock, hopefully hit it. Let me get a bit further back. You see that we hit them, they've fallen down, they're going to stay down for five seconds, then they're going to get back up and carry on with their roaming around like so. So this works perfectly. We have it so that we can throw a rock at the enemy, it's going to stun them, they'll fall down for a set amount of time, and then they'll get back up and continue on with what they were doing. And you can see we can throw the rocks at them and they'll still hit them perfectly like so. So now one extra thing I might add in here is what I might do as well is make it so you can then pick up rocks. So to do that, it's very simple. We're just going to open up our rock BP here. And then we'll do is go to the event graph here, select the sphere collision there, add event, and on component begin overlap, right click in again, add event, and on component end overlap. Other actor for both of these will be your character. So for me, that's cast to third person character. But for you, this could be first, third, or whatever you've named it. Make sure you cast those in the other actor, and that just means if it is this player or if it is this actor overlapping them, it will fire off. If it does, what we're going to do is as third person character of the begin overlap, we're going to get rock amount, like so, hit plus, so integer plus integer, although actually I'll do an increment, increment like that, which again is just going to add one. So do that as third person character again, we're going to set rock amount like that, and that'll be that integer there. So it's going to add one to our value. And what we're going to do is actually move all this down, move this part out a bit. I'm going to hold down G left click to get a gate. This cast we're going to open, 
the end overlap cast will go into close, exit will go into setting that rock amount like so. Now how we want to enter this gate is we want to do this on interact. So again, what we're going to do is go to edit, project settings, and we're going to go down to input and create a new action mapping. This one I'm going to call interact or pick up, anything like that. And I'm going to set this to be the E key, as that's what it most commonly is, either E or F. But you can set this to be whatever you like. Close that, right click in here, get interact, so interact like so, and put the press of that into the gate there, like so. So basically what this means is when we are overlapping this collision, we can enter the gate by pressing E, but if we stop overlapping that sphere collision, we can't go in and pick up the rock anymore. So now with exit of this, what we also want to do is just destroy actor, which means it will disappear, so basically we've picked it up. And what we also need to do is off of event begin play here, we want to just simply enable input, like so, target itself, play controller as get player controller, and this just allows us to actually use the E key or the interact key that we've just set up. So if we hit compile and save, we should be able to pick these up. So if we just drag in a few rocks here, what we can do is if we hit play, walk over to them, if we hit E, you see that we're going to pick them up. So now the reason that's a bit tricky is because this sphere collision is quite small. So I'm just going to unparent the rock there, increase the size of this a little bit. Not too much because this is also the collision of when it hits the enemy. Put that back on there. This should work a little better now. So if we go up to it, and you see if we try to pick it up, we hit E, nothing's going to happen. We're just going to kick it. The reason for that is our sphere collision is set to block all. So if we select this here, it's going to block all, meaning it will also block the player. So what we want to do is we want to add another component, this one again being another sphere collision, like so. We just leave that there, see how big this is, so I might increase the size of this a little bit, hit compile and save, and that should now work. So it's overlap all dynamic. This one won't affect how it hits the AI or the enemy, because this will be overlap, not hit. So the other one will be an event hit, this will be an event overlap. So now if we compile save, again you can get that to be as big as you want, so actually I might increase it a little bit more. This is basically where the player is going to stand to pick it up. Again, make sure that you also parent it to the top sphere. I might also rename this so it's easier to see. So interaction or pick up, collision, anything like that. Go back to the event graph and we're going to change these events here. So right click now on the interaction collision, add event, add a component begin overlap. Right click, add a component end overlap. Move these back up and then we're just going to reconnect these like so. So now other actor goes into there again. Other actor like so, connect the executions up. So now this should work a lot better if we hit compile, save, and then one final thing we need to do is actually also select this interact here and untick consume input, which means we can then use this on multiple instances of this rock. So if we place down more than one, we can still use it. Now if we minimize this, hit play to test it, we can see that if we, well he's just walked into it so we've got one less now, but you see that still works, he's been knocked over. But if I press G and throw away all of these rocks, so I'm still pressing G, I'm not throwing any. If we walk over here to this rock and I hit E, you see we picked it up, so now I have another rock which I can throw, and I can't throw any more. And then this should still work with these ones that we already have, so if I go over here, hit E, I can pick all of these rocks up as well that we've already thrown, and I can then re-throw them again, like so. So this now works perfectly, I can pick up the rocks that I've already thrown, and I still throw them at the enemy to still stun him. So if I can find out where he is, we should still be able to test this again. He's over there, or well, he just got hit by one anyway, so that works. So now he should be getting up afterwards and continue on again. So I think that'll be it for this video is we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've made it so we can throw a rock or an object at the enemy AI and he will be stunned, fall over, and then won't be able to move for a set amount of time and get back up afterwards and continue moving. And then once we've thrown these rocks, we can also pick them back up again anyway. Or we can just pick them up and throw them like so on any button press that we want. And if they hit the player or the enemy, it will fall over like so and won't be able to move. And you can customize this completely however you want. Like I showed you before, you can set up the velocity that they get thrown at, how long he stays down for, all the animations, all that good stuff. But thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like, subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.